the dead time of a stop flow instrument is the time it takes for the solution to go from the center of the mixer, where the reaction starts, to the observation point. This is the part of the reaction you do not see in your stop flow recording. So the lower the dead time, the more you see and the more information you can generate. This is an example of a trace you can obtain with an 8 millisecond dead time. The data looks good and it could be fitted perfectly using a single exponential. However, if we do the same reaction with a 1 millisecond dead time, the trace looks completely different and shows an initial decay during the first 8 milliseconds. The model is clearly not a single exponential anymore. Without a short dead time, you would have missed this early data and it could have led you to misinterpret your reaction mechanism. The zero point on the time axis does not correspond to the start of a reaction. It corresponds to the initial age of a solution at the observation point. In other words, the dead time. By definition, the dead time is the cell volume, so from the mixing point to the observation point, divided by the solution flow rate. The cell volume is known and given in the user's manual, and the total flow rate is set by the user thanks to the stepping pointers. The dead time can therefore be estimated by the software for each experiment. I said estimated because there could always be a small deviation on the real cell volume because of O-ring compression or because of some hydrodynamic phenomena. This deviation on dead time is in the range of 0.1 to 0.2 milliseconds. For most reactions, you could trust the estimated value as not much would happen during this time. But for very fast reactions, I mean where some signal change could be observed during this time, the experimental dead time needs to be precisely determined. This could be performed easily by choosing a fast reaction that follows an exponential decay. First, you mix the sample with buffer to obtain the maximum signal amplitude expected. Then, you run your kinetics and fit your trace with a single exponential. You obtain a rate constant and a signal amplitude. If the dead time was zero, this amplitude would match the amplitude of the dilution. The missing part of the signal is the reaction that occurs during the dead time. Therefore, by extrapolating the exponential, it is possible to determine the time shift on the time axis. This is the dead time. The dead time of a stop flow is directly linked to the size of the cuvette you are using. In most configurations, the dead time is between 0.5 millisecond and 1 millisecond. But using the Marco cuvette accessory, you could reach 200 microsecond dead time. This performance is not only due to the cuvette small volume, but to the mixing and the pushing technology, as the mixing process must be completed much faster than the dead time. Some detection techniques like neutron scattering or FTIR require larger cells to have sufficient sensitivity. And in that case, the dead time could be a couple of milliseconds. Dead time is important, but if you want to exploit its full benefit, you need to ensure that the time resolution of the spectrometer you use is faster. For example, if your stop flow has a 0.2 millisecond dead time, but you collect data every 10 milliseconds, then the effective dead time will be 10 milliseconds. This is why most bench spectrometers or fluorimeters cannot be used efficiently for stop flow studies. Biologic offers a range of spectrometers specially developed for rapid kinetics with acquisition speed optimized for stop flow. So, by combining 200 microsecond dead time with a 10 microsecond data sampling, you could easily observe reaction finish in a couple of milliseconds. To know more about dead time or other important stop flow features, please visit our website or contact our team.